A zombie outbreak has been spreading and the insurance companies out to make a buck have started creating zombie life insurance and you are going to be one of those prospects. You will be either obtaining certain things like endowments and investments as you go throughout the game hoping to not become a zombie or you can buy things like life insurance, uh, critical illness insurance, and medical insurance. And as you start taking mm, the process of, the, of developing the illness of becoming a zombie, you'll start getting payouts. Now your objective in the game is to either A, become a zombie, make enough money to the point where you can spread your zombie illness to other players and have them have less return, or of course to not become a zombie and score as much money as you possibly can by investing as the side project. Will you become the wealthiest zombie or non-zombie in the Apocalypse, find out in the game Zombie Life Insurance, a two to five player board game that takes about 10 minutes per player to play and it's for ages eight and up. Collect all the insurances, attempt to score the points, and of course prevent yourself from dying if that is indeed your goal. Let's go ahead and show you the game down below what it comes with, how it plays, and then we'll come up and talk about my review for this game, uh, Capital Gain Studios. They've made a ton of games like Debtzilla and Cryptocurrency, and yet another game, a blockbuster in its franchise, if you get the reference from the box there. Let's go ahead and down below. Welcome to the zombie apocalypse, and luckily for you, the insurance companies have you covered. We're going to be playing a three-player game, and so I've set it up for three players already. And as you can see, uh, there are cards in the game. There's going to be Wanga, your currency. You're going to have health tokens with a front and a back side, and then you're also going to have a first player marker to indicate who starts the game off. Every player is going to get a player guide with a front and a back for the human and the zombie turn, three wanga, which is your currency for the game, your three health markers, and you're also going to be getting four cards, three random actions, and a personal protective equipment piece of gear, or PPE for short. Uh, the way you're going to do that is you're going to take this deck of cards. You'll take out any number of player cards that are not in the game, so a four and a five player game. Uh, if you're playing a three player game, the four and five player cards on the bottom left here are going to be removed, and so I've went ahead and taken these out. You'll also be taking out any infection cards and any PPE cards and then you're going to deal out three cards to each player from the deck with the removed cards. After everybody's got their four starting cards you'll shuffle all the infection cards and any additional PPE and then you'll place the deck here next to the shop of insurance and investments and the first player will begin their turn. The person who most recently bought insurance will go. Make sure you go ahead and put your PPE hidden into your hand and set your hand aside face down so that nobody else can see it. And that player will now take one of the two actions. Action one is they can go at, well, I said should say one of the two different options. Uh, option one is they'll gain two currency, perform two actions and draw a card. And the other one is they'll gain three currency, take no actions and draw one card. So regardless, you're always gonna draw one card at the end of your turn. The beginning of your turn, normally you're going to go ahead and pay for any insurance that you may have. If you have insurance in front of you that has a little symbol with arrows that have a little circular um, symbol there, that is how much of Wongo you have to pay at the beginning of every single one of your turns, basically meaning that you're basically paying at the beginning of the month for your insurance so it doesn't lapse. So if you don't pay for it, you're going to lose it. And then you'll take your turns. So in this case here, this player wants to take the first one, so he would take two Wonga. Uh, then he's going to go ahead and perform any two actions he wants. There's three actions. You can go ahead and buy investments, you can go ahead and buy insurance, or you could go ahead and play a card. To play a card, there's a cost on the top left-hand corner. In this case, these three are zero, and this one is two. And then there's the action of what it does. And in the middle of the card, the bottom center, I should say, is where you can perform that specific action. The bottom right-hand side is how much you're going to make if you have an investment in front of you at the end of a round. So these can be randomized, and they're not really important for you to know, up unless you're you know, unless you're sorting the deck out in attempts to gather more money for investments that you may have accrued throughout the game. Speaking of investments, that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to spend two for my first action, and I'll take an investment. And you'll take an investment, and you'll put it in front of you, meaning that is the investment that you're buying. And you can go ahead and buy something else if you want. This player might, of course, want to buy another investment, and he'll spend another two, and that will cost him four total. So now he's got two investments. He'll have that in front of him the entire game. After that, he'll draw a card and put it in his hand. If it's an infection card, he's basically going to lose a life. He'll turn one of these guys over, uh, which means he's down from a three to two. If he goes to zero, he'll turn into a zombie and take the zombie actions. Uh, and then he's gonna take this card like Exploding Kittens and shuffle it into the deck somewhere or put it into the deck of his or her choosing and going and place it just like that. 
Another thing too is if you have a PPE gear, so for instance this personal protective equipment, you can spend the two currency, provided that you have it, and discard this card for, to, prevent, for, to prevent yourself from losing that life. Maybe you want to lose the life, maybe you don't. The choice will be up to you based on if you have the currency in order to do so. But in this case I don't. Whenever you have one of these guys flipped over, the cost of new insurance cards is going to increase by one every time you buy it from the shop here because the insurance companies don't like to sell you insurance if you've already been injured or have a tendency to get more ill, which just makes sense thematically as well. Then your turn is going to end and the play will pass to the next player and they can go ahead and perform the same actions. They can buy these guys or these guys. They can choose to go ahead and play action cards from their hand and then after that they are going to go ahead and draw a card uh, and check to see is it an infection. If it's not they'll put it into their hand. At the end of the round uh, basically you're going to go ahead and have all players after everybody's taken a turn the last player is going to draw a card from the action deck just like this and place it face up at the round indicator area. So there'll be a round indicator area. I'll just go ahead and set it over here. Everybody's then gonna go ahead and get paid based on the number here uh, and times the number of their investments. So in this case, it would be zero times two for this player and these guys would get nothing. However, if it wasn't this one, for instance, maybe it was this one here, that would have a one. Everybody who has investments will get paid their number of investments times one and they would make a profit. So investing is going to generate you more income over time, right? And that's also gonna symbolize one round. This is then going to get passed over to the next player, and the game will end after six cards have been laid out on the field, which is pretty simple, right? Uh, and that's how the game goes. You'll play out every round just like that after six cards laid on the field. You check to see how much money you have, and whoever has the most money is the winner. If you have all of your lives flipped over, you turn into a zombie, in which case you'll flip this card over, and on your turn, instead of taking the normal actions or gathering any currency, all of this stuff will get discarded from you. You'll collect any value that you may obtain, to, obtain from them, and then you're going to go ahead and choose one of the three actions here. Maybe you'll look at the top two cards of the deck and return them back in any order, or make a player lose two random cards from their hand, or finally look at the top four cards um, of the deck and remove one of them from play. So you'll get to choose any of these guys, which basically hurt the other players in the game, which means you're not technically out, but you can't gain any more money, and you're just trying to have the most money at the end of the game and hope that they're not able to acquire as much money as you currently have. If not, then you can just go ahead and mess with the players if you want. And that's it. Let's talk about a couple of these guys as to what they do in a couple of actions, and then we'll go into my review. Now, this one over here is gonna cost you one. It's also gonna cost you one at the beginning of your turn. However, this is a unique one. Every time you spend one at the beginning of your turn for it, you'll put it on the card, which will generate you money. Uh, as long as you survive at the end of the game. If you do not surprise survive, you're going to get two points and discard get two coins and discard this. However, if you do dis if you do save yourself from getting turned into a zombie, you'll get two money plus two times the number of money on this card. So the longer you have this and the more money on it, the more you're going to make when you are alive at the end of the game. Investments, you know how those work. Medical insurance is going to generate you five every single time you take a damage. Critical illness insurance will generate you a certain number of money if you get your second one of these guys here. So if you have one and you flip over your second one, that'll generate you that money and this will get discarded. However, it does have a cost to it at the beginning of every turn. When you want to buy it, it's up to you, except you cannot buy it if you've already got two or even obviously three of these da uh, damaging illnesses. And then the final one is life insurance. If you die and you have life insurance, it will pay out based on the number. And that's it. That's basically how you play the game, zombie life insurance. Let's go ahead and come up and discuss it. So let's talk about the game, and in the game you're going to have a handy dandy little player guide here. This is going to address what you can do on your turn, and there's two different separate options you have. Well, the first one is you can gain the currency, perform your actions, and draw the card, and the other one is you can gain extra currency but take no actions and draw a card. Drawing a card kind of functions similar to uh, Exploding Kittens in the way that yes, you get beneficial cards, but you can also of course get infected. Infection is not great, because when you get infected you're going to take losses, you're going to lose money, but it can be okay if you prepare and that's with the use of things like life insurance these are the things that are going to net you money for instance if you die uh, there's also the critical injury insurance if you get two wounds or you're too long in the process you'll score points that way uh, if you're trying to hurt yourself it can benefit you in the game because you can overall gain a bunch of insurance money over the premiums and you can score a bunch of points but if you don't go that route maybe you want to go the other route which is the investment route in this case here you're buying these investments and then every turn 
you're going to have the opportunity at the end of the round to uh, score points based on the cards that pop up. They're kind of like the round cards and they mix in with the game as well in attempts for you to get as much money as possible without perishing. You want to keep those HP tokens because these guys here are going to net you five points at the end of the game if they're on the green side. But if they're on the red side, you will lose the five points and all new insurance cards will cost you additional money because health insurers do not want to actually give you a better health coverage for somebody who's already sick. They want to they want to give insurance to the healthy people, which is uh, basically how the insurance scam kind of works anyway. Uh, and of course, like I said, with those infection cards, you never know what uh, when you're going to get them. But uh, like Exploding Kittens, you'll put them in the deck somewhere of your choosing and you can kind of actually forego the mystery a little bit and hurt your opponents and zombies are going to like to do that as well. And then you have action cards. These can, can be considered one of your actions as well. They have a cost represented on them and they do unique things. Maybe viewing the cards and rearranging them. Uh, perhaps you can draw the card from the, di uh, card from the discard pile or maybe you can take a, a currency or another action and then draw a card. And these all have their own benefits as well as of course they're going to also score you points on based on your investments if they end up being a round card which is is actually rather nice and so because of that you have the game that's kind of like do you want to hurt yourself try and score points that way or do you want to keep yourself alive as humanly as long as humanly possible humanly possible not zombie possible and score points in the investment route stocks or insurance it's kind of really up to you and based on what you and your opponents do will determine what your decision making skills are going to be against them if they start messing around with collecting life insurance and collecting critical injury insurance you know most likely they're probably going to try and hurt themselves and so maybe you actually want to keep them alive uh, as opposed to actually letting them turn into a zombie because then the insurance pays out with them and they score a bunch of points in the game. Or maybe they're going the opposite route and they're trying to get as many investments as possible. As long as they're alive, they're gonna score points of those investments. And if they perish, they won't get anything. Thusly, preventing them from being able to do so by placing those specific infections on the deck so that they draw them will be helpful to you. And that's the idea of the game. The game simply plays out in rounds and you're basically attempting to do one of the two different strategies or maybe even a mix of both. Uh, when you turn into the zombie, you're going to flip over your player card and then bam, now you can choose to vandalize, scare, or bite your opponents. And basically it just messes with them on their turn. So you're not ever out of the game. It kind of gets rid of player elimination, which is nice in the sense that you kind of can make the game end quicker. And provided you, of course, want to turn into a zombie, which can be a mixed bag. There's definitely better choices to make depending on the strategy that you want to choose at the beginning of the game. For instance, maybe if you don't want to go the investment route, maybe you start collecting the insurances quicker because there's more value at the beginning of the insurances. They give you more turnout if you buy them sooner. Or if you want to go the investment route, maybe you want to buy more investments at the beginning so they pay out overall more in the long run. Um, or of course, endowments. Maybe you want to pick them up, but there's a cost to them because some of them have continuous effects. You have to have investments that pay off in order for you to gain money via the endowments. Otherwise, your currency at the beginning of your turn is lost. And so there's a lot of mathematical thinking in this game. It's a little bit of take that. It's a little bit of cutthroat. It's a little bit of exploding kittens all mixed into this kind of insurance type game. It feels like another one of the Capital Game Studios titles in the sense that you've got like the movie style poster on the box here, which I really, really enjoy. And of course, the idea, the thematic aspect of the game. One of them's like the Banana Republic. Another one's about capitalism and debt. And another one's kind of about cryptocurrency and the value of it and how you can trade it. And this one here is about the medical insurance industry. It's kind of about a stock market a little bit, about investments and whatnot. And it all plays a role pivotal in a game with a fun, unique theme attached to it. I really, really enjoyed Zombie Life Insurance and a lot of people are going to enjoy this game as well. If you don't mind a little bit of Take That and a little bit of a party game mixed into an economic style game that's got a bit of canoodling, working together to stop somebody else, and of course, ultimately help you achieve your goal of either becoming a zombie and scoring a bunch of points off of the insurance insurance or staying alive and collecting money off of your investments, it's something you should definitely take a look at. Check the link down below in the description. It's currently on Kickstarter, but you can go ahead and pick up the game Zombie Life <laughs> Insurance or Zombie, <laughs> yeah, Zombie Life Insurance by Capital Gain Studios. All right, outro. Thank you guys for watching our Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Zombie Life Insurance by Capital Gain Studios. If you like this video, check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube, like, subscribe, and comment. And don't forget, of course, to hit that bell notification button. It greatly helps us out here in the YouTube algorithms. All right, guys, if you haven't taken a look at the website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Also, don't forget to check out our live streams every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. PST. We can watch us play games just like this one live and win games 
games too every week. It's a lot of fun. We guys appreciate you guys for joining us. Uh, we should have the Kickstarter up. Um, the backer kit should be up and going and we have the manufacturing copies being printed for uh, prototyping to make sure they're all going to look nice and then we'll move on to final, ma final manufacturing shortly thereafter provided there's nothing problematic with what is going on but it all looks to be good and we're excited to show you more information as it arrives all right guys that's all i got for you this time and as always i look forward to avoiding the zombie apocalypse with you next time especially because the insurance is damn expensive <laughs>